Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Elite Currency. My name is Chris. Together with Nenet, of course, we uh, run the website EliteCurrency.com, and that's basically geared towards helping Forex traders uh, in their mission to make profits. And uh, today, we want to help you by taking a look at the markets together uh, with using the HARP charts. And uh, for June, you have the ability to take a demo as well uh, and look along with us with these HARP charts. In fact, for the entire June, just write us an email. Actually, you have the email address right there, info at elitecurrency.com uh, to set that up. Some of you wrote earlier today. I did not have time yet to send you that information or the, the chart package, I should say. But uh, I hope to be able to do that tomorrow morning. First of all, before we take a look at the markets, though, we need to explain the risk involved trading for exchange uh, and other financial markets is considered high risk. It may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information for more information on that. This webinar and recording is for informational and educational educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer. Plus, you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, thank you so much for your attention on that. So just a little short introduction about Nenet and myself. Uh, we, of course, provide webinars, analytics, and our opinions at admiralmarkets.com. Please check us out there. If you want to join a good broker that has won the best MT4 broker award in 2015 in the UK, uh, among other things, for having such a uh, you know up-to-date technology, for instance, the MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition with 60 extra plugins. You could do that through us as well, and you'll get extra courses and extra credit. So I think that could be interesting for you. Take a look at this link here, elitecurrency.com slash all of our systems tools. All right, a little bit of info before we kick off this webinar about what we're looking at in, uh, yeah, what we're looking at in the charts, what are we searching for? Preferably, we're looking for a trend. We're always looking for kind of a momentum and trend to be present and to trade with that. Those are the best scenarios. Sometimes, yes, I do, you know, we look at reversal setups if uh, the charts are looking good enough for that. And with good enough, I mean, we see divergence, we see some reversal patterns, maybe some uh, reversal candlestick patterns. You know, we want to see some, some sturdy evidence uh, for such a reversal. And yes, then we do think about reversal trades. Other than that, we like to, to trade with the trend of momentum because uh, it's less risky, its price is basically going to move quicker in our advantage, and uh, it's just a tad easier, especially if you use the harp charts to guide you with looking at the trend. We use these oscillators and the green Hakenashi candles for an uptrend, and you can see it's pretty easy to spot. All right, then once we establish a trend, we want to check out if there are any filters to make sure that we're not trading right into some important support or resistance levels for intraday trading. You don't want to go long right in front of the pivot point resistance or short in front of the pivot point support, depending on what side price is at. Then we want to check if there's momentum. Of course, we want to trade with that momentum. So we're looking for momentum pullback continuation uh, once we establish the trend and know that there's no uh, filter blocking that setup. And then we have the potential once we have those green lights uh, to enter a short or long, uh, depending on various methods that we basically offer through these hard charts. For instance, the oscillator setups, the, the candle setups, the arrow setups uh, are just a, a couple of those that we use. Uh, and by the way, you don't want to use all of them at the same time. You want to, of course, always be aware of your risk management, uh, you know, and uh, be careful of that. All right. So enough said on that. Let's take a look. We have NFP today, so that's going to be difficult to look at swing trades, uh, unfortunately, folks, today. Um, sorry for that, but there is just that's just reality with regard to news events. You don't want to be over risking, uh, you know, in front of a news event like that. But we will take a look at intraday trading. We're going to start off with the, the your dollar. Take a look at the, the majors today. And if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to ask. Want to keep it very simple because sometimes, you know, I perhaps have the tendency to overcomplicate things, go a bit too quick. I don't want to focus on the basics, which is basically uh, deriving the analysis. How do we you know, go from analysis to potential setup? So step one is, is trend, as we saw from our presentation. So we want to find a currency pair that has a trend. And sometimes we will not have a trend. Sometimes we will have a perfect trend. Uh, and you know, from that point of view, it's, it's going to be a bit difficult uh, to 
you know, to, to, to always be um, finding a perfect setup. But sometimes we get multiple ones. So it depends on the environment. At this moment, we have a lot of retracements going on in the four-hour chart. So that makes it less ideal. That's just a fact of reality. But on the lower time frame, there could be a trend. So we're going to anyhow be focusing on lower time frames. Uh, so let's see if we find momentum on that. Preferably, I like to have a trend on the four-hour chart and then zoom into the hourly chart and take setups on the hourly or 15-minute because I am an intra-week, intra-day trader. Uh, the beauty about Harp is that it is possible to basically combine all time frames. And if you find that, for instance, a downtrend on the weekly and you see the daily is retracing, uh, you could even take a daily setup or a four hour setup or, or a weekly setup, right? Most of us would probably be not looking at a monthly chart and a weekly chart, but technically uh, the principle, the theory, the concept in a way applies to, to all time frames. Now, the cool thing is, as I said yesterday, I just want to quickly throw this in here before I forget, is the fact that we're going to have a dashboard with Harp and an alert system. So we will basically be scanning automatically for a trend on a time frame, looking for a retracement and continuation on a time frame lower. So that's perfect because you get an alert and you already know, for, you know when you get an alert that there's a trend pullback and continuation. So all of that energy scanning is not needed. What, what remains, of course, is to see uh, whether we like that setup, whether you know discretionary kind of things like filters, uh, news events, uh, do we have time to manage it, of course, risk management. Uh, those are still very important, obviously. But the scanning will all be automatic. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. And as I said yesterday, I'm very excited about that. I think it's going to very much simplify things because uh, it's going to automatically alert us when the conditions have been met, what we're looking for, all right? Um, so I think that's cool. Now, if alert system like that would be working, uh, we would have had a alert, for instance, on the euro dollar daily chart, for instance, after this candle, this one here, all right? And the reason is, is because we have weekly, we have bearish momentum, as you can see, all right? Um, and we're looking at basically a pullback and we see that the momentum is the counter momentum is lost and we see a continuation. All right. Now there are some settings that we will, you know, go through when looking at this uh, alert system. Uh, for instance, the weekly does not have high Kanashi red candles. So it depends how str stringent we are on, uh, on the trend. And if we're a bit, you know, more, more, uh, demanding and we want red high Kanashi candles, then we would not get the alert on the daily chart. All right, so that depends. Um, because if, in this case, we don't have the the red, the dark red candle on the weekly. Okay, that would be, depends on the settings. We'll show you that uh, when the time comes. In any case, what we're looking for is basically a combination of Heiken Ashi candles, and that's the best trend. If there's a Heiken Ashi dark red, for instance, and a red oscillator here. All right, let me pull this down so you can see that. All right, red and dark red. For uptrend, we're looking for light green and blue, like here, for instance. This was an uptrend on a weekly chart on the euro dollar. At this moment, we, when looking at the euro dollar, we don't have any trends, strong trends, uh, basically on the higher time frames. On the four hour chart, we have a retracement. On the hourly chart, we have basically no uptrend. We have momentum, but we don't have the green candles. So you can quickly see already that anything from an hourly above is not trendy, all right? Now, that's good info because we know from that point of view that the euro dollar is just not going to be a great currency pair to maybe tra trade uh, intraday or interweek, all right? Now, it doesn't mean that we could still not maybe scalp the trade or take a, a scalp swing trade. Let's take a look at the lower time frames for that. And let me use a different template for that. But from swing perspective, there's nothing interesting because there is no trend. All right. I want to make it really try to make it as super simple and clear as possible. Anyhow, we we're not that interested in, in swing trades, right? Because we said of the NFP, we would rather wait after that. So let's take a look at the scalping template right here. And we're going to take a look at the 30 minute trend. Now, ironically, 30 minute charts uh, is showing. Uh, a bit of an uptrend. We don't have dark blue candles, but we see 
uh, that we're in a bullish environment uh, from this momentum perspective. Let's take a look at the os other oscillators to see if they confirm that. And they start to, right? They start to, the ECS, ECS MACD is starting to do that. Uh, our MA oscillator is not really in a bullish territory as yet, but slowly but surely we're seeing a bit of a switch over to, to the upside. We have uh, blue here and green here. Uh, we don't have dark blue, so we can see the first kind of signs of an upside. The 50 minute chart is was an upside at certain points like here and here. Now it is retracing and it's pushing back up again. So if we can break above this pivot point, uh, I think that there could be that breakout to the upside. In the webinar on Adam Markets this morning, not sure if you, you managed to, to see that webinar live by any chance, uh, I was talking about the fact that the euro dollar could bounce if we get two uh, bullish candles here. So yes, we did get that and we are seeing a bit of follow through. Anyone who entered at 112.20 is up a few pips and we had a, you know, another bullish bar, a third one, and this could be the fourth one. It's not a great upside, folks, I know, but, you know, the environment is going to be a bit tricky with the NFP, with the Brexit next month. Uh, but you can see how valuable it is to look at candlesticks, two bullish candles. And indeed, I think we are seeing kind of a, a slow upside. Uh, in any case, the downside is having clearly problems. And that was, you know, explained basically this morning uh, to look out for those candles to to get a uh, an idea about that. Uh, so. Yes, I was saying if those two candles do appear that we could have a bounce to the upside. And we're seeing that right here. We see a bounce off, off them too. Now, um, I don't think there were great setups considering the fact the price really went sideways. Don't get me wrong. I think that the better setup could still be if we get this to be dark blue and we have a light green candle, and then we can look at some scalps perhaps, right, by looking at the five-minute chart and waiting for basically price uh, to make a pullback here, this to go back to zero. And then we're looking really for price to bounce off the pivot. We're looking for price to show gray and blue candles again. Let me show you. Uh, like here, for instance, right? Uh, red, gray, blue. That kind of basically trend pullback continuation. Trend pullback continuation. So we're looking for candle color changes. We're looking for uh, arrows, for instance, like this. Uh, we're looking for um, oscillator changes, like here, for instance. Those could all be potential setups uh, if we get a 15-minute momentum push uh, on this. And for that to happen, I need to see dark blue um, basically on the 15-minute chart on this oscillator. And then there could be a uh, an intraday bullish environment. Forget the higher time frames. They're not trending at all. It would have to be kind of a breakout trade, intraday breakout trade to the M4 perhaps at 112.80. All right. So let's do the same exercise, but on the pound. It'll be a bit faster. So I hope you're ready because I'm going to be going quickly through these time frames. So ready, set, go. All right. What do we got on the, the week monthly? Downtrend, right? A uh, bit of retracement, mixed of a uh, mixture retracement uh, downtrend, but ultimately uh, pretty bearish. Weekly, we got an Aikinashi down, and we see actually that this is kind of a uh, uh, a moment where price has peaked on this oscillator, so we can be resuming the downtrend. Looks bearish. Daily is a downtrend, a full fledged downtrend, because we have bearish candles and bearish oscillator, and the other oscillators are confirming that. All of that is extra confidence and downside on the daily. Four-hour chart. We got daily downtrend, but we don't have daily trend. We don't have a, a trend on the four-hour chart. We see that here we're getting a retracement. So if we have a daily trend, but we have a four-hour retracement, what are we waiting for? In that case, we're waiting for this retracement to finish. We're waiting for price to basically um, make its pullback and then make a turn, and that could be a swing potential on the pound USD to the downside. All right. Now, once we get the, the turn, we can even we can keep on the four hour chart or we can zoom into the hourly chart. For instance, if price makes one more push up like this up to the long to moving average, because we do have divergence like that, uh, this could be a resistance spot. And if we do get a turn, uh, we'll probably see price like this. We'll see divergence between these tops like this. 
All right, and we'll see a turnaround. And as soon as we get bearish momentum here, uh, it would be very good potential for swing trades on the hourly because we have a daily trend and a four hour trend to the downside. So this hourly chart at this moment, uh, I don't think is well set up for trades because the four hours tracing, the daily is down, the four hours are tracing, the hourly is up. So let me put that like this. Four hour is retracing and hourly is up, is bullish at this moment. So there's not enough alignment, but as soon as we have the four hour retracement finish and start to curve like this, and uh, we see that the hourly also then starts to dip with the dark, uh, with the uh, bright red, excuse me. All right. Then we have things nicely aligned for downside and we can look for intra intraweek uh, and uh, intraday uh, shorts in my opinion. Uh, for instance, let me give you an example. So we're not working too much with the future, otherwise you might get confused, I think. Um, for instance, uh, let me show you a good example. Here we see an example here. We see retracement here and a retracement here, for instance. So we've seen this turn dark red. First of all, we have here a good push. Then we get a pullback here and here. So when we get the first turnaround, this one and this one, you can see that we have swing potentials to the downside. Those are lighter pullbacks because price didn't go back too far. Here, price went back further. Uh, so basically here you can see um, maybe a bit of a stronger pullback. That could also be happening on the hourly chart. Um, not now, but the next time. The next time we push up like this and I make a turn here, right? And we lose the momentum. That could be an early setup. So something like this, for instance, excuse me, something like this here on the hourly chart, as this goes from thin to thick right in here, uh, that's what we'd be looking for for, for the hourly, all right? Uh, in that case, we have everything aligned daily for our hourly. So the pound USD is definitely potential um, because of the alignment of the downtrend on higher time frames and medium time frames, this is very interesting. Uh, as soon as basically the four hour retracement is, is completed and as soon as the four hour retracement probably makes a bit of a higher correction, I would assume to the minus 61.8 target at around 142.90. Somewhere there, all right? That could be the end of that retracement on, uh, on the four hour chart. All right, from a lower time for, time for perspective, let's take a look. Good, 30 minute chart, we just barely went into bearish territory. 50 minute chart is in a downtrend, but pivot point is right below it. And I don't like shorting as explained in, in the presentation at the start. Don't want to short right into the pivot point. So we really need a break of that pivot point before any shorts, you know, short area is interesting or, or possible. So, and also considering the four hour retracement and the fact that on the hourly, it looks ready for one more bounce to the moving averages, considering the divergence as well and the four hour retracement. Um, we don't have any uptrend, downtrend when looking at this hourly. Considering those things, I think we could expect a bit of a bounce. And in fact, if I would be trading reversals, what I would probably do is, at this point, be even looking for a bounce at the pivot point for the upside. Now, that's a reversal idea because obviously we see downtrends on four hour and higher. But for intraday trading, uh, that probably is the best potential at this moment. Now, I personally recommend to trade with this momentum. In fact, the momentum is down. So trading to the upside would not, you know, match the momentum. I think if you're starting out, it's way better to trade with momentum than to try to find reversal trades against that. Um, so from that point of view, I think to, to make it simple, uh, it's really no setup on the lower time frames. Uh, there is a potential setup later this week, I would say, on a pound USD for downside from a swing perspective. Uh, well, yeah, let's say for a trade for one, two, two days, uh, Thursday, Friday-ish.
maybe even longer, but considering Brexit, I don't think um, it would be wise at all to keep a trade over the weekend, right? Just to be clear. All right, so, you know, it's a bit opposite of the euro dollar. Euro dollar doesn't have any trends on higher time frames. Pound dollar does. Um, so pound looks a bit better, but we just need it to, to finish that uh, retracement. All right, dollar yen. Dollar yen, I, I think I can be quick. We got a lot of momentum to the downside. And let me show you what momentum really means. Look at this weekly. Dark red candles, red oscillator, weekly, dark red and red. Four hour is retracing. Um, hourly is down. Um, so, you know, this, this, is a strong, this is a strong downtrend um, at this point. On the dollar yen, there's just one kind of thing standing in its way, and at this bottom at 105.50, and I'm not going to short right in, you know, right in front of 105.50. Um, so for me, this is filtered out, and despite the trend, I'm not interested in trading it. I would have to see a break below the support for continuation. We see all kind of great stuff like diamonds, red diamonds, indicating we want to trade it to the downside, but that support level is too important to me. Uh, to trade it i think that it could be used as a bouncing spot if i were be have to choose in fact i would rather choose to look for a bounce to the upside than to trade it down at this point unless it breaks 105.50 so from a reversal point of view i think it's far more interesting actually to see if we could get a bounce either for instance if price um, let me put on the swing template once again, this is a bit, you know, not the optimal with the trend setups. But let's say we see price showing here a turnaround like this as it retraces to this bottom. And we see basically the, the oscillator turn back up or, or at least lose its momentum. Uh, if we see, uh, for instance, um, the red candles turn into gray. Those could all be, or, or the arrow, blue arrow here. Those could all be reasons to expect a bounce here and a weakness and failure to break this bottom. All righty. Then, 50-minute chart, pound yen, I think uh, we can, and I want to take a look at euro yen too, we can quickly see that those are all suitable for downtrends. Look at these time frames. You'll see that everyone has a good match between uh, the dark red Heiken Eshi candles and the red oscillators, all right? That's great stuff right there. And uh, four hours are tracing. That's kind of the motto of today, four hours retracing. And I, that's what I said already in um, the Admiral Markets webinar, that that's kind of the, the vibe of today. You just got a lot of retracements going on. All right, 50 minute chart. Let's take a look at lower time frames. Maybe they are provide some interest. 50 minute chart is down. We're trying to break through the pivot as we speak. All righty. Take a look at the lower time frames here. One minute chart is uh, it's pulling back up. Yeah, as I said, the four hour chart is retracing. So, you know, these are tricky things. Uh, and we don't know how far the retracement can go. So even though the 50 minute chart has momentum to the downside, um, you know, you got to be careful here and realize that there's a lot of kind of mismatches between trends. And I think those are risky kind of environments and difficult due to the, basically there's not an alignment um, between two time frames that, you know, that are, that are worthwhile trading. Uh, like the hourly 15, the hourly just doesn't have any trend at this point. So really, there's not really a lot of 
great opportunity out there at this point. And it's, that's a difficult thing sometimes because obviously I would love to, to trade it like last week where we had um, – great trades on the pound odd and, and pound yen and pound dollar. Um, in our live trading room, we had also some setups we took that were great. Um, last week, Friday, I took beautiful trades, 300 pips in one and a half hours. Um, you know, that kind of environment does not seem to be ready today. Uh, not on the pairs that I've been looking at so far. Uh, in fact, yesterday I took a trade together with you to your New Zealand. That, that was a loss. In fact, that was my second loss. Um, second full loss this this month trading harp and i took a euro yen and that ended up for break even roughly just a few pips a few minor pips loss so yeah it just didn't have to push didn't have the momentum unfortunately to, to continue and that can sometimes happen if, if, if things are going a bit slow like today news events are you know on the way and it's just a bit of a, a period of um, slowdown and 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 hesitation and in that case, you know, the market is just not going to move a lot and or it's, it could move a lot when the when the FMOC is released. So from that point of view, that's a bit difficult. And if we if we have trend on the momentum on the 15 minute chart to the downside and five minute. But, you know, the uh, price is bouncing at the pivot point like that. Then we got to be careful. And the hourly is retracing, as we can see, the four hours are tracing. So that's the same like the dollar yen. This could just be a dip to, to basically go up to the move, long term moving averages like this. All right, so that's a that's a basically a counter trend idea. And you know, a good way if someone's interested in a counter trend idea would maybe not be to trade it when we have red candles like this. But if price manages to basically turn around here on the oscillator, right, and perhaps show a blue candle arrow like that, that could be a, could be one of the signals, ways, in fact, to take a counter trend trade, right? The conventional way would be to look for everything trending and zoom into time one time frame and look uh, for a continuation on one time frame lower. But as we've said before, this is more than basically a system. This is a charting package. And it offers flexibility to, you know, to, to trade it in different ways besides with the trend pullback and continuation. Those are the most, those are the safest setups. Those are the ones that have the, you know, the, the let's say the best mileage. Those are the, yeah, the, 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 the desired ones, the best ones. But when, when we start to use these charts uh, more intensively uh, and you do your analysis, partly on candles perhaps and, and, and hopefully with this harp, and you, you see, okay, there's a good chance for reversal, uh, what would be my confirmation? You could say, okay, my confirmation is an hourly blue candle, uh, blue arrow, or I'm waiting for the 50 minute chart to lose its momentum and use that as a, as a counter trend, uh, basically, opportunity. Uh, let's see if the euro yen is the same. Euro yen is, yeah, it's broke below the pivot, in fact, so it's a bit different. Momentum on all time frames here. And except the four hour and hourly, same story. Folks, so I don't want to bore you here, but it's really the same all, all over the place. Um, here you can see my trade that I took yesterday ending up for a small, very small loss. Uh, you know, price just took too long to break this S1. There was wicks there, and I moved it to uh, basically the stop loss to, the, to just above that candle high, uh, which well, was a good thing. I, I tweeted it as well, uh, as far as I remember correctly. So hopefully uh, that's why it's good to follow Twitter so you can stay up to date about my trade management as well if you think that's useful. So I think that was obviously not a bad decision uh, because price has just gone sideways with a slight you know, hint to the upside. So yeah, yeah all, all trends at all time frames, but the hourly 30 minute, one hour, four hour is uh, 
is is, is correcting, and um, we're just seeing not a, really anything that that aligns itself. Let's take a look at the Kiwi. Last but not least, one of the trades that I did take today. I'm not, you know, I have to think about if I stay in or not. Um, or yeah, let's talk about that now. In fact, uh, just a quick observation from Florin. Sometimes you find lots of trades, and sometimes you have a scalp a little. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's different environments, just different vibes, different, uh, let's say, economic environments as well, news events. Sometimes we got swing trades ready. Sometimes we got good intraday trades. Sometimes the market is just pretty much retracing no matter where you look at it. So we got to be flexible with that. Sometimes... You find a lot of trades. Florin is asking on a four-hour chart or, or adding. And sometimes you have to scalp a little. Sometimes you find lots of trades. Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, uh, Kiwi. Uh, retracing on the monthly, but it is uptrend on the weekly. All right. So, from that point of view, I don't think the monthly is too important at this point. The weekly is up. Uh, daily is retracing. Uh, but bullish environment, still green candles, okay? we got a red arrow, but that red arrow, especially if everything is up, all right? Don't get me wrong. That's not a sell signal, right? Remember, we are, we're looking at an uptrend at this point. Everything is blue. Look at these oscillators. Blue, 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 green, green. Green angled, green bars. All right, I got a question from one of our traders this morning. What does this, this momentum say and actually that momentum doesn't have any specific role but what it does do is give extra confidence extra confidence that everything is up or down that's it really um it's the ability to to get more confidence from our analysis basically um trying to make sure that we're not assuming trying to make sure uh that you know that we're not thinking in in f for the market we always want to analyze be like to win we want to go where price goes so we have to let price basically take the lead and we follow it if we talk about basically if we talk about dancing we don't want to take the lead all right not with the markets we want to be the ones that follow the pace of the markets all right, so everything here is showing bullish. The red, one red arrow, the, the diamonds, the, even the green, they're dark green, which means retracement. The red arrow would, for instance, be something to use if, if the higher time frames are showing downtrend and we're looking for a reversal trade or looking for an exit because we had a trade from down here and we're looking for an exit point. Those kind of things at this point. Uh, but considering the uptrend, we don't want to use that red arrow four hour chart is showing the potential for end of retracement we got a blue arrow already we have loss of the red candles we got gray candles now uh, it's still a retracement mode so it would be great if we see a bit of momentum and we do we see blue bars green bars here so what i did was take a take a long dare uh it's up a few pips and it went a bit my way and then it dipped back, almost took me in again for the second entry. And uh, well, basically, I'm looking for a follow through to the upside. And uh, that would happen, I guess, if we have either uh, the oscillator, for instance, showing that it goes back down and loses momentum, or if it were to show in it suddenly uh, thick blue, that could be a turnaround. If we get the light green candles back, or if we get a blue arrow. Those could all be swing setup potentials uh, on the pound, on the Kiwi here. On a uh, on an hourly, on a 50-minute chart, we can see the prices has gone more or less sideways today. And again, we're trying to break above the M3. Already. 
but we don't have momentum. Sorry, just if, I was just changing the trade quickly. We don't have momentum. Look at this. This is red. So we need this to be red, and we would have basically probably price uh, fighting against the R1 if this turns blue. Excuse me, if this turns blue. And then we're looking for um, – we can zoom into the five-minute chart when that happens. And we're probably looking just for a bit of a pullback here and turn around for continuation up. That could happen today on the Kiwi. I think there is good potential to the upside uh, for an intraday slash swing trade uh, to the upside. All right. Um, how far can price move? From that point of view, it's always good to use uh, the Fibonacci sequence targets. And I use the bottom like this. All right. I say buy. I say OK. And let's take a look where price is. All right, you see the price has not gone really too far. We're just within level one, two. So if we break this level two, we got some space to level three. And what really gets interesting is if price manages to break above three, then we have space to four and potentially five. Then we get more space to the upside. All right, so we're still at the early phase of a, of a trend. The trend is best when we're above three. So what I said this morning is I really were going to be very careful about how this develops. If price is not showing follow through and if it's showing hesitation here with like a bearish candle suddenly all of a sudden here or uh, even like a small one and then a bigger one like that, that I'm going to exit when it happens. Try to break even as much as I can or, or take a small loss. But if we see candles like this, I'm fine staying in that trade. All right, so uh, the entry basically from a hard perspective, well, it was uh, it's an uptrend weekly, uptrend daily, right? Uh, it's a retracement daily, I should say. It's four-hour chart. We finished the momentum here. And if you look at that, we also had the blue candle, blue arrow, and we had engulfing twins. That was the basis of the trade on the Kiwi after finishing more or less a zigzag here. All right, so we got the uh, green fractals indicating the upside here, excuse me, here too, and on the hourly. So it's just a question of monitoring. We got the trend, I think, more or less on our side. It's not the best trend ever, but considering today's market, I think it's the best uh, that I can wish for. And what will happen, the only time will tell, but I think the trend is okay-ish. It's enough to try it, and I'm going to trade management basically on the hourly and four-hour turn. All right. So, folks, um, all in all, to simplify things, we got dashboard alert system coming up. Once again, uh, what we're ideal environment is we're looking for trend uh, and momentum on one time frame. Then we'll zoom into the lower time frame, look for a pullback continuation. If we get the continuation, we can zoom in again, one time frame lower, and look for scalings and follow-throughs. Uh, and you know, you can use this three time three time frame combination to look for trend pullback continuations nicely. You can use the harp charts also in different ways. I just explained, for instance, by waiting for reversal trades and, and taking those reversal trades when um, you know candles color momentum is lost, candle momentum color is gained to the other side, arrows appear. Uh, we get breaks of fractals, etc. There are a lot of options, so um, stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see. Be careful of NFP. Tomorrow we got some very interesting webinar, in fact, with Admiral Markets. Uh, tonight, then it's going to take a look at Time Factor. That's always interesting, by the way. I recommend that. Tomorrow, we have British referendum on the European Union membership impact on the financial markets. We're going to take a look at the, the Brexit, basically. So I hope to see you tonight with Nenet, tomorrow with us both. Uh, regarding elite currency, once again, you can get Harp charts for free trial this month. Uh, you will be able to join more webinars next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, same time, 2 p.m. GMT. We'll take a look at the markets. Hopefully, we'll be have more action like we did basically uh, 
last week, just today's, my perspective, a bit slow, no swing trades, besides maybe the Kiwi, and no intraday trades as well, as far as I see, uh, with NFP so close by, so those things happen. Uh, but next week, maybe that will be different, so I hope to see you then, and wish you all great trading, folks. Talk to you soon. Cheers.